KCS-186, this is a RCA Taiwanese portable set that uh, deep desert buried in the mud. And I think my favorite thing about this is perhaps the water line on the bottom. I don't know if that's showing up, but you can see the mud line there on the bottom. And this is the one that in a previous video had a, yeah, right there, check out the water line that had a weak CRT. And I don't want necessarily want to resurrect it, but what I want to do is I want to power it up and see what it does, uh, just for the entertainment value. All original RCA tubes, which I wonder why I had to rejuvenate the CRT in this. That might have been a mistake. Um, all right, here we go. Let's see. Watts. And here we go. Warming up. I think I just heard high voltage. Oh yeah, we got a raster. I'm kind of at a loss as to why I have four of these for one thing. And then the second thing is, why are there no knobs on any of the four of them? That this is so bizarre. That's an interesting effect on the camera, the blanking of the camera. Hey, this thing works. Okay, just for some reference on this set, we're drawing 108 watts, and the horizontal hold control coil, the solder joints are cracked on the bottom of the board, so if I touch the coil, if I just touch it, see there, it just totally loses it. All I did to this set... All I did to it was I hosed the tuner down with WD-40. WD-40. This stuff, you know, that's not legal in California. It's probably a no-no, but I didn't want to waste my good, expensive $20 a can cleaner on this thing. I am surprised. This old tube stuff 
is just indestructible. Okay, here's number two. This is the one with the cracked case. And you can see how much cleaner the board is here. This one has a Mashusta tube over there. Uh, Compactron. That's got a GE there, RCA. So this one looks like it's got more hours on it. Ah, oh, crap. We got a broken pin here. Crap. Okay, I just kind of jammed that in there. Let's go. I know the glare is horrible. Can't get away from it though. I hear static. The other one was what, 108 watts? Ooh, smoke out of the yoke right there. See it burning? Still nobody home. Well, with that disconnected, the the wattage is 116. The connected, it's 120. Let me play with this for a minute. Okay, this is a bit of a different set. This does it uses a high voltage rectifier tube instead of the diode. And this is a really inappropriate way to test this, but this, this wire is grounded. We got no high voltage here, but we have high voltage here on the cap. Now, that's a pretty weak spark, so either if we don't have enough high voltage because the filament is heated this tubes filament is heated by the flyback so if we don't have enough high voltage it's not going to heat the filament so this this that seems a little bit weak to me and if that if that's weak it's not going to even get this tube to the point where it'll conduct so that's not saying the tube is bad Okay, I'm noticing that with this disconnected from the yoke, I'm getting a way bigger spark here. So that almost maybe suggests to me that the yoke is bad because with this connected, the high voltage should actually increase this is a tuned circuit so it could be the yoke is shorted it could be there's something else wrong with it uh, let me let me try one more thing someone has already been in here before because this lead here was just tacked on there so I I don't think this being broken off was accidental I think it was intentional checking just quick checking it with the ring test uh, I'm getting, with both the coils disconnected, I'm getting six rings on the bottom and one ring on the top. So the top, the top is definitely, there's something wrong with the top coil here. I mean top, I mean this one. I, I, it doesn't look bad. I don't see any corrosion or anything, but 
Maybe that's why there were so many of these um, these RCA KCS 168s that I found dead. Maybe they just have chronic yoke problems. I noticed that this coil here is just completely disintegrated and falling apart. The horizontal oscillator control. So, I don't know. Good question. Look at, look at how it looks underneath there. But I have a feeling the yoke failed. That's why the set was retired, not the other way around. Let me say a couple things. First, that the way you're watching me test stuff by arcing it in that, that's not the appropriate way to test stuff. Um, just a disclaimer, because I'm sure there's someone crawling and getting ready to comment on how dangerous what I'm doing is. I've been doing this a long time. So, um, it's a set that I don't care about. Uh, just look at it and... I can do this kind of stuff. I don't recommend it. You cannot do this on a transistorized set. You will blow it up. Tubes are very forgiving. You can arc them and short them for a second here and there, and it doesn't hurt them. But transistors, one little arc like you see there, it would fry the horizontal output transistor. So don't don't use these methods. Also, the horizontal circuit is a finely tuned, you know, resonant circuit. The yoke and the flyback and all the coils and stuff, all that has to be working right or else it's not going to develop uh, enough high voltage. If it doesn't develop enough high voltage, it won't heat the filament in the, on the tube and there won't be any DC. I think the tube is probably bad, but I don't know until I get the high voltage up where it should be. And I can tell it should arc about a half an inch or more. And it's just not doing it because the yoke is not there. It needs that yoke to tune that circuit in so it produces the high voltage. So maybe I'll grab the third one and we'll have a look at it. Here's number three. <laughs> this is the dirtiest, most web-encrusted one of all. I mean, this thing is horrible. But the yoke doesn't look tampered with, so let's go. Let's see what happens. Let's get to Watts over here. There we go. And this one has the high voltage uh, rectifier stick, by the way, and not the. Uh, Nobody home. I really kind of I shouldn't I shouldn't do this on this one because this one has a solid state rectifier, but nothing. I have a feeling these things have yoke problems. I have a feeling that's a weak spot with these sets is the yoke. Well, I'll ring test it if I can get through the spider webs. Okay, on this one, I, I don't have it out of circuit, but I'm getting um, 12 rings on both the top and the bottom. So, come on, focus on that getting 12 rings on both the top and the bottom so I'm thinking that's in circuit but I'm thinking the yoke might be good on this one no high voltage though so some maybe the horizontal output tube or probably more likely the flyback I don't know flybacks and yokes the coils just seem to have a higher failure rate on this stuff than anything else definitely than capacitors in my world I, I 
I wish I could just change capacitors and fix most of this stuff, but it's never the problem for me. You know, capacitors never fix these things. Um, maybe because it's a unique situation where it's been so abused. But anyway, um, that's a quick look at three RCA KCS 168s. Uh, abused in bad shape and the one that was actually under water seems to be the only one that works so um, lots of other sets to resurrect so these will take a back seat look at how deep the dirt is on this chassis to where you can just see the tops of the resistors You know, and everybody else steam clean or pressure wash, pressure wash, pressure wash. I'm very reluctant to do that because I'm going to get water down in inside parts that, you know, might ruin them. Might just strip that extra little bit of varnish off that coil and cause it to arc out. So I'm almost just, you know, tempted if I clean this up and resurrect this set to just... Um, Maybe use some compressed air and blow it off. Come on, focus, you stupid thing. Move along faster. Pretty cool.